Hey chaps and welcome back. We're now going to finish off the new map dialog behavior and as I alluded to in my previous video we're going to take one more look at the enter key press behavior in that dialog because the way we've done it so far albeit it does work it's not the correct way of achieving that behavior and I'll show you why. So let's open up Visual Studio and give our editor a run. Hit file new. Okay so the idea is we hit the enter key on any of these number components in here and it will enact the code of the OK button. But some of you may have noticed in doing that, if I hit enter, you will hear the classic Windows ding. Okay, so the reason of that is because we haven't done it the correct way. We've done it a way and it works, but it's not the correct way. So let's close down this editor. And the correct way is very, very simple. So if we just open up the designer by double clicking on new map dialog and then click the dialog and down here on the bottom right, you will find a beautiful, beautiful property here called accept button. And this is really, really simple. As the description says, if this is set, the button is clicked whenever the user presses the enter key, which is perfect for our use case. So all we need to do here is click this drop down and select button OK. And that's it. That's all we really needed to do in the first place. So the only thing we need to do now is clear up the code we created to simulate that behavior. So what we need to do is go through each of these numeric components here by clicking on them, click the event lightning bolt, and then find our key press event and just remove him. Delete, and then repeat for each of the other components. Okay. The last thing we need to do is also remove the code behind that event because we wrote that as well. So we now need to go to the code for the dialog, right click view code, and then in here, for some reason in going through that motion, it's removed the code for me. I'm not sure why, but this had our previous key press event code in there, but we can now remove this. So this is no longer needed. So let's remove that. And then also the on OK can be removed. And then originally this can go back to close because when we hit enter now, this button will just be invoked. And that's all it really is. So if we hit the start button again now, file new, if we hit enter, it enacts the code of the OK button, but we hear no Windows ding either, which is spot on. The next thing we need to do is start getting the information out of this dialog back to our, uh, our back to our form, so we can then create a map from that information. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of doing this, and I'll show you both ways. So if I close this down for a second, and then focus on form one.cs right click view code this is where we create our dialog from earlier so you'll notice if I type dialog dot here I can't access any of the numeric components okay what we can do by opening the designer for new map dialog is click on one of the components say numeric map width and then in here we can find our access modifier if I can find that it's called da, 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 da. modifiers here and we can change this to public. Okay. What that then allows us to do from form one.cs is type dialog dot numeric map width, and we can pull that information directly out of the dialog. That's one way of doing it. And that to me is the least favorable way of doing it. So if I open up the design dialog again, I'm going to set this back to private. Okay. So we're going to find that, change the modifier back to private. And what we're going to do is we're going to return a class from this dialog to the form because I would not want to expose all my components to everyone outside of the dialog that just breaks encapsulation completely. And I would rather the form say, okay, here's the information, use it as you wish. So from our new map dialog, if you right click on him, view code, we're going to create a class in here. I'm going to call this public class creation details. And in here, we're just going to have all of the parts we need to create a new map and they should line up with the numeric components. So we have public int map width, get set, and then rinse and repeat for each of the others. Okay. The next thing we need to do is store an instance of that on the dialog. So if we have public creation details, 
details get private set and the private set means it only allows this dialog to set it okay uh, oh of course I've named it the same as the class so we'll just call this details and then in the OK button being pressed, we now need to just set these properties on this class. So all we need to do here is details equals new creation details. And then we do map width equals numeric map width dot value. OK, of course, this can be a decimal, as I said the first time we created it, but we know it's never going to be. So we're just going to cast that to an int. And then we just repeat. OK, and that's all we need to do. So from that, we can then pass that information back to the form through this details class. And it never needs to know about the numeric components. So if we change and chop it around, as long as we pass this information back, it doesn't matter how we create it. So back in the form one at CS class, we can then pull out that information. But we only want to pull out that information if the users hit the OK button. OK. How do we know if they've hit the OK button and not the cancel button? Well, this show dialog returns a dialog result and we can store that in something called a dialog result. So the result can be dialog.show dialog. And that result can be one of several things. So dialog result can be if result equals dialog result dot and then here are all the options it could be. But how do we specify what that option is and how do we know what it's going to be? Well, it's relatively straightforward. So if we head back to our new map dialog, we can actually change what these buttons mean when they're pressed. We can set it in code. So one way of setting it in code is just typing dialog result equals dialog result dot OK or dialog result dot cancel, depending on where you're from, or we can set it from the designer. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it from the designer, much like we set that accept button. So in our new map dialog designer, open him, click our OK button, and then in here we can find a dialog result, which we're going to set to OK. And then for the cancel button, we're going to set that to cancel. So back in our form 1.cs, we can now work out what button was pressed. So if we just shorthand of this a little bit more now, if dialog show dialog is equal to dialog result OK. We know the users hit the OK button, so we think we know it's safe to pull out the details of the map to be created. So how do we then create a new map? Well, if we go to our monogame editor control, right click view code, we can see here how we created the map. But you'll also notice that we passed in the graphics device to that map. And that's something the form one has no knowledge of. So really, it's up to this editor control to create that map. Ideally, we shouldn't be passing in this graphics device at all because the only reason we're passing that in is for the camera, okay? And that camera really shouldn't be in there, ideally. But that's an argument for another day. For now, we just want to get this working. So in our monogame editor control here, we just want to create a method called public void uh, create map. And here we pass in the various details we need. So we want map width, map height, tile width, and tile height. Oh. Okay, okay. Now from this, we can basically repeat this code here, down here, and then replace the numbers with these variables. Now, if I remember rightly, these are actually the wrong way around. So you've got tile width, tile height, width and height, whereas we're passing it in as this order. Okay. It's a little bit confusing, but we're just going to roll with it. So I don't want to change the map constructor just yet. So we want tile width here, tile height here, map width here map height there okay and it should be that simple the only thing now we need to tell the form to create this or rather call this method so back to the form we can then get our monogame editor which is actually wonderfully named monogame editor one we should change that dot create map and then here we're passing the various details from the dialogue okay so we just type dialogue dot details bear in mind details was the name of that instance, if I go back here, details dot map width dialog dot details map height dialog dot details, and you get the picture. Okay, now that's quite long. I'm going to break that over multiple lines. Okay, okay. 
So let's give that a quick run and see how that behaves. So hit the start button, file new, and then let's actually set some values in here. So we've got 10 by 10, that's our usual size. So let's change that a little bit. So it's the size of two, and then we'll have a tile width and height of 32 and 32. Hit the OK button, and there you have it. There's our map specified by the details from our dialog. So if we hit file new again, we'll have 10 by 10, but a tile width and height of say 64 and 64. Hit OK, and there's our humongous map. Okay, so there's a couple of things we could do to improve this now. If we hit the maximize button, you'll see that is just completely out of control. I've got a massive map and I've got this tiny viewport here to view it. So there are a few things we can do to tidy up the experience of the editor as it's progressing, but that's one feature now that we've got in there. The next thing I'd also like to tackle at some point is moving, like I say, moving this graphics device out of the map, not the graphics device, sorry, the uh, camera out of the map, because that's the only thing that requires the graphics device and having that live in here as well. But I don't want to overload a single episode with various things like that. For now, this is another feature achieved. We've got that banked. It's another improvement we've got and we're going to work from here and work on the next steps. And that probably will be the next step. We'll also look at improving the experience of the editor, like I say, by making this expand and contract with the editor as it resizes, just to make that a little bit nicer. And then from there, we can start looking at adding a tile set selection down the left here. I'm quite looking forward to it. There's loads of ideas we've got for this. It's just finding the time to do it. I appreciate the coronavirus is impacting a lot of people, myself included. I hope everyone is well. I'm sorry for being a little bit slower than I anticipated, but with work and the situation around the world, it's just often the case for a lot of people. I hope you're all very well. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope that was beneficial to you. If there's anything else you'd like to see, please let me know. I'm really interested to hear about other ideas you guys would like to see, but please make sure it's pertinent to what we're working on. Um, I can also write other languages as well. If there's other projects or even tutorials you guys would like on anything at all, please just shout. I'm interested in any kind of programming. So do let me know. Thank you all for watching again. I hope you enjoyed that and take care everyone. Bye-bye.